street signs. But right now, gold, it begins the new year at about $640 an ounce. But where will it end the year? Soaring to 800 or stumbling to 600. Well, we have asked the editors of two highly rated investment newsletters to weigh in. Doug Jimerson is strategist at National Trend Lines. He's our gold bear. And Kevin Kerr is editor of Research Trader Alert. He is our gold bull. And Kevin, you are the bull. Glass is half full. So let us begin with you. Why 800? Well, there's so many factors in place, Aaron. I mean, last year was just kind of the beginning. You know, we, we did reach that 24 year high. Obviously, we corrected off of that and it offered some more opportunities to buy in. But the same reasons that buyers were buying last year, they apply this year. We are seeing worldwide buying of gold, physical gold, shares of gold. We have new ETFs that are going to demand physical gold. We have central bank buying. We have currencies shifting now to, uh, to being backed by gold. Russia has talked about a fully convertible currency backed by gold. Even Argentina has talked about a gold peso. So there's just so much interest in this metal. Uh, we see it climbing this year, definitely. Doug? Happy New Year, Aaron. Happy New Year. <laughs> Last year was a big reversal year for gold. We saw a spike top at 730 and a plunge that took about 30% off the value of gold and then took about six months for gold to crawl back uh, about 50% recovery of the loss. Uh, I'm a big picture investor, uh, and when I see big reversals of this type, I have to be cautious. I expect that gold is going to take some time to recover from that reversal. The best case, I would think, is some sort of trading range for gold between 650 on the high side and 540 on the low side, which was the low last year. And I think that uh, there is a potential that we go down to that low and take out the 540 low. Kevin, I want to ask you a question about, about your two points. I mean, Doug's giving his range here. But when you talk about the, the, the two fundamental things that you see driving gold higher, exchange-traded fund buying and central bank buying, mm -hmm. On the central bank side of things, I mean, we hear these headlines constantly about central banks saying they're going to put more in gold. It would seem to me that it's either already priced into the market or in places like China where they say they're buying gold, that they already have a lot of gold that they, in their own supply. So do you really, are you really sure that there's going to be excess demand? Well, you know, this is a, this is a major factor. Uh, you know, obviously it, it leads the headlines whenever it happens. It is partially priced into the market, but it's an indicator for, uh, that we're seeing further buying worldwide, and that includes small investors. You know, I agree with some of the points Mr. Jimerson made. We did see a major correction last year, and that's because we have a lot of new investors in this market that really couldn't handle the shakeout, and so the market moved a lot faster to the downside. But we see recovery to the upside also being much faster as a lot of these investors come back in. So, Doug, what, what do you think then? I mean, if you, if you, what would you go short here? I mean, if you think it's going to go down as low as 540, would you short a gold ETF as a way to play this? Would you short an ETF of mining stocks? Would you short individual stocks? How would you play the downside? Well, I think at this point in time, it's too early to, to take any firm position on gold. It's, uh, it's in a trading range right now, and I'm a trend follower. I would wait for the trend to clear up. Right now, the intermediate trend is fairly flat. And responding to Kevin, I would have to say in terms of economic terms, that's a real wild card because the economy has slowed down dramatically. And the question is, will the rest of the world economy slow down with the U.S. economy? And will the global slowdown?